Hello amigos. <laughs> I don't know what this video is going to be about. I'm just now starting it out with another haunted house motorcycle breakdown. Uh, I don't know what happened. I mean, I know what happened, but and I have a pretty good idea why it happened. Oh man, it's starting to rain too. Anyway, I got somebody coming to get me, so I'm not panicking too bad. It started cutting out on me like it was running out of gas, so I hit it in reserve, and that didn't do any good, and then it just quit on me. So then I'm hitting the starter, hitting the starter, I'm in the middle of the highway, uh, just barely rolling, and finally it starts to start, and all of a sudden, the starter won't disengage. And there wasn't a darn thing I could do about it. The kill switch wouldn't shut it off, turning the power switch off, power kept going to the starter. And so it just kept on spinning over and over and over again until it died. So once that happened, I got off the bike and pulled the tools out and got the negative uh, cable off the battery just to keep any more power from going to it because I saw smoke coming off the solenoid. <laughs> I guess trouble head it is. Yeah, they a haunted house on two wheels. But I'm pretty sure that electronic ignition that's in there, that single fire Ultima ignition, that's the only culprit I can think of as to why the darn thing quit on me or maybe something else happened. I don't know. Let's see. Let me check something else. No. Well, it's none of that. But anyway, I got somebody coming to get me um, with a truck and trailer. They should be here in about 30 to 20 minutes. And look, the missus just showed up so she can get me out of the weather because it's starting to rain. So uh, anyway, Dun, da, da. Super Daryl came to rescue me. Ain't that cool? Hey guys, this is Daryl. And uh, hey everybody. He, he, he took out of his precious time to come. Wait a minute, you're retired now. I'm retired now, man. I retired from teaching back in the 11th of May. Okay, okay. It wasn't that big of an inconvenience, but anyway. Oh man. <laughs> I guess guys, if I'm gonna keep riding these old bikes, I better keep in touch with my friends more often, right? <laughs> <laughs> Let's see what's next. Okay, we got the bike in the garage, and the, the funny thing is, not funny, it's never funny when you break down, but no, it's kind of, kind of yeah, especially when it's raining like this, but uh, I didn't see him, but Daryl saw another guy broke down on the bike, not too far down the road from here, so we're going to see if he needs any help too, because that's uh, what you do, right? It's supposed to be. Yep. That's a girl, man. That's a girl? Yeah. <laughs> okay, uh, looks like it's not a guy, it's a girl. And she is in the rain trying to fix, looks like she's trying to fix her motorcycle. Looks like a sportster too. Um, so uh, let's see if she needs any help. I don't think she's gonna wanna be filmed though. I mean, yeah. I mean, how often does somebody just help you and they're holding a camera and filming you at the same time, yeah, right? Really. But anyway. Uh, all right, amigos, it, it looks like the situation is under control. Yes, thank you so, so very much. Yeah, it just turned, turned out to be a little bit of a oil scenario clutch. <laughs> Putting on a new handlebars and uh, not enough, not enough sliding the yeah, clutch. Yeah, those those risers, up yeah. those four inch risers on there. You don't mind being on YouTube, do you? Um, I won't point the camera at you then. <laughs> <laughs> That's why I'm not pointing it at you. But anyway, this is what you do. You see a rider on the side of the road. You help him out if you got the means to do so. So, we're paying it forward. <laughs> I broke down, and then they're still here. So uh, I'm gonna cook my blah 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 blah. Daryl's about ready to go home. Hey, and buenos dias, amigos. It's the next day, and I'm on my way to Scooters. I tell you what, that scenario yesterday with that bike, all my breakdowns that I've ever had, or like 98% of them in my life, have always been due to operator error, which is why I said that uh, shovels and iron heads are not problematic in and of themselves. It's usually the owner, but this time, that was not my fault. There was literally nothing I could do. I could not get off the bike to get to my tools because I couldn't find neutral. If I got off the bike, it would have kept moving forward all by itself. I mean, there was literally nothing I could do but to sit there and watch it burn up. Oh, and by the way, may I say, I'm ditching that electronic ignition because that's the first thing that started happening which started this whole starter issue too. I mean, it started cutting out on me just like that SNS did. I have a set of points. I also have a set of flyweights, points cam, condenser, the whole nine yards. So I'm on my way to scooters to uh, see if Kenny's got a solenoid, possibly a starter motor in case I need one, and a five ohm coil so that I can run uh, points, you know, like dual fire. So anyway, because here's the deal. I'm not downing on an electronic ignition. When it runs, it runs great, okay? 
when it's not running <laughs> it sucks but if I had an issue down in my points area if I was running points that is I could at least pull over readjust something maybe change the condenser out if I have a spare one of those you know just carry the spare parts and I wouldn't be stuck on the side of the road I wouldn't have to have somebody come get me so the OEM stuff that would have came on that shovel was a set of points and condenser and everything else so that's what's going back in that bike and also <laughs> a new starter system at that so I'm gonna quit yammering my hammer because I could really go on and on and on about this and uh, we'll see you guys at scoops Okay, it's now tomorrow and uh, I didn't film being in Kenny's, but uh, I found my problem. I got my primary all taken apart and my problem is this thing right here. This is why the starter kept staying engaged and wouldn't disengage. This thing was binding up and it wasn't letting the spring do its job. In fact, I can still feel a little resistance. So while this was out, it was still pulling power from the battery, you know, switch on or off didn't matter it was not retracting so it just stayed out there and apparently on a dry primary this stuff stays dry so it would definitely help to keep some grease on this but this is toast anyway as you can see the starter clutch is toast it's not supposed to move like that but check this out okay it did happen to have another one of these which is in a lot better shape as you can see I'm going to be putting this in uh, and if the starter motor is bad I got one right here this one's used but it's definitely in better shape than what that one's in and also don't know if I told you already I have another used uh, solenoid that I had on the shelf I bought it for the iron head but um, while this was coming in the mail I found a brand new one at Kenny's so I bought it and I just shelved this one so I guess it's never a bad idea to always buy parts when you don't need them right off the bat. Okay, I've got the primary all back together. I got the primary cover on as you just saw. Um, I didn't film all of it because it's not rocket science. You could figure it out if you had to do it. But, uh, oh yeah, if you have a belt drive, don't forget to put some tension on that belt and always be mindful of your uh, clutch spring tension. Basically your spring plate and your pressure plate need to be about an inch and a 30 seconds or something like that of a gap between them. And it's a little tedious, but Oh well, check your manual if you got one of these. But uh, here's what I got so far. Okay, I've got the battery charged back up and it is just barely hanging on in there. This is just in case I have a bad solenoid or whatever, I don't know. I can get to the cable and undo it real easy, okay? So, uh, well, Looks like I ended up with a piece of crap solenoid. <laughs> oh well, I guess that's what happens when you buy used parts on the internet. Wait a second. I probably have a burnt starter motor too. Oh, okay, I forgot about that part. Uh, <laughs> so I guess um, I'm just gonna call it quits for the evening and pick this up tomorrow.
Okay, it's the next day again. Got a new starter motor put in. I uh, barely got my battery hanging on. I don't even have the cover on. I just want to see if this thing will work or not. So uh, let's see if it does. I kind of think it might. So we'll see what happens. Oh, yeah. Well, that problem is solved. So, as you could hear it fire up, obviously my ignition unit is bad. It cut out on me, like I said in the beginning of this video. Um, so it's working now, but I don't trust it anymore. It's coming out, for sure. But not on this video, because I already got enough footage already. I figured this video is long enough already. So, uh, be looking for the next video about this bike where I yanked that electronic single fire ultimate ignition out of this bike and put a set of points in here and also a dual fire 5 ohm coil. So be on the lookout for that video. I don't know if that's the next video after this, but that's definitely going to happen. All right. So as always, um, anyway, <laughs> like I always say, I haven't said this in a while. I have no idea what I'm going to film next, but hopefully it will be interesting. Oh, wow. Never mind. You guys keep the rubber side down and you be good to yourselves. Thanks a lot.